that favored T. rex because it contained a variety of potential prey animals. Sharing the environment were vast herds of duckbill and horned dinosaurs, which provided T. rex with the enormous quantities of flesh it consumed each day. At Egg Mountain in northern Montana, Jack Horner has found a bone bed containing as many as 10,000 duckbills buried by a volcanic eruption far more devastating than the eruption of Mount Vesuvius that buried Pompeii. For Horner, herds like these are evidence Tyrannosaurus lived by scavenging. We had duckbill dinosaurs and horned dinosaurs traveling in these giant herds. And we can make an analogy to the Serengeti plain of Africa, where we have the giant herds of wildebeest traveling by the millions. And those herds have scavengers that actually follow them, vultures and hyenas and all sorts of things. If the tyrannosaurs were not scavengers, there probably wasn't a scavenger. So we had hundreds of animals dying and nothing eating them, which seems unlikely. The teeth of T-Rex have been found among the bones of the duckbill and horned dinosaur herds that wandered across the late Cretaceous landscape. But both Phil Curry and Peter Larson disagree with Horner's scavenger theory. The reality is that there really are no pure scavengers and there are no pure hunters. A lion will eat food that's already dead if it finds it or it will take it down um, if it can't find dead food. Tyrannosaurus rex and the other theropod dinosaurs would have been in the same kind of position. I believe that the Tyrannosaurus rex would not pass up a free meal. It would scavenge when, when, it, when, it, when a meal became available, but it's not gonna wait around for something to die. When it's hungry, it's gonna go out and kill. Whether Tyrannosaurus killed for its food or ate carcasses, Peter Larson's colleagues found physical injuries on Sue's skeleton that proved one T-Rex was not afraid to attack another. In fact, one of these ribs back here ne next to the shoulder, we found that never really did properly heal. And back inside, in that exostosis, that extra bone that grew around this infected area, we found the fragment of another Tyrannosaurus rex tooth. Sue was bitten and fought with, probably many times over her life, other Tyrannosaurus rex. Larson also found that Sue had been taken care of. She had once shattered a leg bone, which then healed. This meant that for a long time she had been unable to walk and could only have survived if another T-Rex had brought her food. But then, says Larson, she was killed by one of her own kind. We found injuries on her skull which were not healed, where her the post-orbital, the bone behind her eye, was crushed down. The squamosal actually had puncture marks in it, and the left side of her lower jaw was ripped out of its socket and pulled to the side. I believe that Sue's face was actually ripped off by another Tyrannosaurus rex. Peter Lawson continued his search for more specimens of T. rex. In 1992, he excavated a less complete skeleton he named Stan. Meanwhile, Jack Horner's challenge to the conventional view of T-Rex would continue to inspire debate. How could a monster with a gaping, powerful jaw full of saber-like teeth be anything but a killer? When he first discovered T-Rex in 1900, Barnum Brown assumed it was a predator. It was certainly the largest meat-eating dinosaur ever found. The monstrous skull of T-Rex in particular seemed designed for killing. Engineered to be strong, it was also light. Large holes in the skull reduced its weight. But the bone structure was strongest in the jaw to withstand the awesome force of the muscles that could crush the bones of any animal. This is a, a jaw of a real Tyrannosaurus rex. You can see one of these huge teeth in place in the jaw and another tooth lying on the side of the jaw here. You can look at this long root and how it's anchored into the jaw. This was a killing machine. This was a machine which could bite through even the leg bone of another Tyrannosaurus rex. Jack Horner is not convinced. Whether it hunted or scavenged, T. rex would have needed its steak knife teeth and enormous jaws 
for cutting the huge quantities of meat it consumed into smaller chunks. But Horner's argument pivots on another part of T-Rex's anatomy. It's tiny arms that have puzzled paleontologists for decades. Horner has found with the Montana Rex the first complete arm bone of Tyrannosaurus ever discovered. Though T-Rex was over 15 feet tall, its arm was no bigger than the arm of a man. Horner commissioned sculptor Matt Smith to reconstruct the arm of the Montana Rex using the musculature of a variety of modern-day animals and birds for comparison. A biomechanical study of the arms showed that the animal could lift up to 400 pounds. It was stronger than expected, but still puny for an animal that weighed up to seven tons. Horner concluded the arms were virtually useless for capturing prey. Tyrannosaurus rex's little arm would not reach its mouth. One arm wouldn't reach the other arm. He couldn't clap. Try to imagine yourself trying to catch a chicken with your, with your hands tied behind your back. I mean, you'd be a mess. A bipedal animal needs to be able to stabilize its prey, and the Tyrannosaurus rex couldn't do that. Unquestionably, the arms of T-Rex were much less efficient for capturing prey than those of Allosaurus, an earlier dinosaur that resembled T-Rex. If we were to compare Tyrannosaurus rex forelimb with an older bipedal carnivorous dinosaur, Allosaurus, you can take a look at its hand, and it was made for predatory behavior. Now, when you compare that to Tyrannosaurus rex, its hand has become smaller and more apparently more specialized. But by far the most impressive evidence that Rex was a predator were its senses. A large meat-eating dinosaur must be able to find its potential victims anytime, anywhere. And T-Rex had the means to find them. A keen sense of hearing, for example, well adapted to tracking down moving prey. And unlike most dinosaurs, its vision was stereoscopic, which made it easier to see movement. If you look at the eyes, you can see that the eyes are extremely large, and uh, the optic lobe of the brain is also well developed. So again, there's an indication that it has uh, a good sense of sight. Furthermore, in Tyrannosaurus rex, the eyes are facing forward. And like human beings, they would have had stereoscopic vision. This is something that would be very useful if you're a hunter, not so useful if you're a scavenger. The eyeball is going to be really tiny, really small. But if we look at the animals like Velociraptor or Troodon, they have huge eyes. They have huge openings for the eyes. Perhaps even more important for a meat-eating animal than its sense of hearing and sight was T. rex's ability to smell its potential victims, alive or dead. It has a huge olfactory bulb on the brain. We know this from cat scanning a relative of Tyrannosaurus called Nano Tyrannus. This olfactory bulb gave it a tremendously acute sense of smell, a sense of smell which is not necessary for someone who is only eating carrion. I mean, we as humans who have a very poor sense of smell can smell rotting animals sometimes a mile away. You remember in, the, in Jurassic Park, the, the guy says, don't move, the Tyrannosaur won't see you. Well, he might not have seen you, but he certainly would have smelled you. But to Horner, the large olfactory lobes of T-Rex have a different meaning. For an animal that feeds primarily on dead animals, the sense of smell would be the most important sense of all. In fact, if you compare the size of the olfactory lobe to the brain size, a Tyrannosaur had a larger olfactory lobe than any animal that ever lived except a turkey vulture. In 1994, paleontologist John Stora discovered another T-Rex, this one in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan. After only nine T-Rex finds in all the years from 1900 to 1990, three nearly complete skeletons have been found in the space of only four years. And with the increasing interest in paleontology, more fossil hunters are on the trail of the elusive Rex. Perhaps the world will soon find out if it was truly the monster it was made out to be. Could it really be a gigantic prehistoric vulture? For now, its reputation is safe. For most of us, it is still the quintessential dinosaur.
the one, the only, the legendary Tyrannosaurus Rex.